Hey guys, my name's Jason Creel and you're watching A Lawn Care Life. You know, I made one of those big life purchases the other day. We bought a house and working on selling our current house. And just so happens the house we bought has got a really big yard that's in really bad shape. But that doesn't intimidate me. It kind of gives me an opportunity to do what I do and that's try to renovate this yard. So today I want to show you what is going to be the beginning of hopefully a long series of videos of renovating my own yard which needs a lot of work and there's a lot of steps involved in this because it's not just a weed control situation we're going to talk about that in this video some you know just to show you the yard but it's going to involve landscaping it's going to involve uh, purchasing a zero turn mower because i bought uh, a little over five acres of property so you know there's going to be some grass to cut and we're going to clear some land off so i'm going to have a, a forestry mulch out here mulching trees up a lot of things going to go in to turning this entire property around and i wanted to share it with you i'm kind of looking forward to the journey a little bit not not a whole lot but i am looking forward to transforming the yard that part doesn't intimidate me the house part you know that's another situation I, i'm not that handy on that so anyway let's get to it i'm going to show you the yard we're going to talk about some of the plans for it and then hopefully you can follow along the journey which will continue on in to next year all right windy day i don't know how bad the wind's picking up on the camera here but um today is the first day that it's felt like fall we're in late mid-october and the, going down in the 40s tonight so really excited about that because we've had a hot summer and long fall so let me get up here by the road and we'll show you uh so i've got five acre a little over five acres but now it, a lot of it's grown up so there's the house not much to the house we're gonna do a lot of work on it not a lot but you know paint it um and do some stuff on the inside and ultimately the goal is to build a house on this property so you can see here we've got a lot of you know a lot of trees a lot of things going on it backs up so i've got somebody with a, a forestry mulcher on a skid steer and we're going to try to get a lot of this land cleared off so that i can ultimately see what i'm working with here now a good thing about this property is it's flat and where i live there's not a whole lot of flat property so to have you know five plus acres of flat land in what we feel is a good location we were excited about hopefully a place we can live for a long time now let's talk about the yard let, well, let me just kind of give you a, a run around here of what the yard looks like now and the landscaping like i said i'm going to need a, a lawnmower to cut this property so hopefully sometime next spring be uh, getting a zero turn lawnmower and excited about you know looking at those and trying to figure out which one i'm going to get i'm going to be at the gie here in a few weeks so actually next week i'm sorry and can uh maybe get out there and test drive some of those but all right look, here's the landscape we got some this house was built in the 60s so you know been around a while these azaleas might be from the 60s who knows but got these giant azaleas and, and y'all chime in on the comments here because you know i i know a little bit about landscaping but i don't do landscaping per se i do more you know weed control and fertilization so um i like to make a, a decent bed here uh, to plant some shrubs and what, i don't know whether y'all think i should keep these azaleas obviously if i keep them i like to cut them way back uh, i feel like if i cut them way back with a chainsaw they'll come back but just bring them down to a reasonable height but you know i don't know if i'm even going to do that because they're just they're just uneven you got these grown together on the one side and then this single one over here but you know they're big i like that but maybe i'll keep them till next spring and see how they bloom and then you've got this bed here with with some mondo grass i i just my last house had so much mondo grass i'm kind of mondoed out so I, I might just redo that all together and that rose bush i'm afraid it's not going to make it i brought a few things over from my old house where not a lot we're in the process of moving but there's my rusty metal bird i'm definitely going to make a place for him continuing to survey the property here what i like you know i just got some room to work with here i can get me a big hopefully metal workshop and be able to do some stuff with that and you know there's a, just a lot of potential now it's going to be a, a project there's a little fire pit over there you can see you just got random little piles of 
junk here that I want to get cleared out, hopefully with the skid steer, but you got this mimosa bush. You know, I don't need that. I'm gonna hack that thing down. Here's the, the uh, fire pit. I, mean, I just feel like I can make some of this nice. Got mimosa trees growing in that. Maybe they'll get burned in my fires if we have a, a weenie roast or make s'mores or something. And then on the back side over here, <clears throat> let's see what we got. Got the, you know, I don't know if this is be considered a, a Nandina. I don't know what you call that. I, it looks kind of like some kind of tall Nandina looking bush. Um, I brought a bird bath. This is just like Chinese privet to me. They sort of shaped up as a shrub. So I definitely want to try to get that pulled out. So then on the back, you got some more of these, what I'm calling Nandinas with us, right? Or not. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep those or not. Um, but you know, I want to, I want it to look nice. I want the yard to look nice. And over here, you've got a really struggle. I believe this is a hydrangea, but it's hard to tell, uh, but it's just, you know, seen better days. So a lot of things to work on, but that doesn't bother me at all. So let's look at the yard. Here's a pile of something, old barn looking workshop thing out here that might get bulldozed to the ground. So it doesn't look very safe. All right, let's take a survey of the weeds. Now, like I said, time of the year, we're, we're in mid October. So you've already got some of the wild onions or wild garlic popping up right here. This, um, yeah, yeah, I'm assuming, I'm guessing that's what we'd call Creeping Charlie. I'm not 100% sure somebody can confirm that with me. But that's over here in the shady areas. You're gonna have weeds like that. But what I noticed, okay, so, you know, I probably need to cut this grass one more time before it goes dormant or starts, stops growing for the winter. So I can get that done. Obviously it needs cut, but I'm kind of glad it's not been cut because what it allows me to do is to you know, see what, what's going on in the yard here. And what I've seen, what I see in a yard like this that obviously has not you know, had a lot of care done for it, is obviously there's, there's a lot of weeds. When I get down in the yard, I can see Bermuda grass growing in here. And there's actually a decent amount. You know, of course, there's a lot of weeds, a lot of grassy weeds. It's not just easy control weeds. Let me give you a quick overview of some of the grassy weeds I'm seeing in this lawn and kind of a plan of what I'm looking to do to transform this lawn. And I'm really excited because with the, the amount of sun that we get on this property, I don't see any reason why next summer this lawn shouldn't look remarkably different. Now, next summer comes around, it doesn't look that much different that I've obviously failed at my job, but I don't expect that to happen. I expect this yard to almost be unrecognizable. And we're gonna follow it on video, at least that's the plan, so that'll be easy to track. Okay, grassy weeds, let's check them out. You got <clears throat> foxtail. Got the seed head that has kind of fuzzy look to it. I'm assuming that's where it gets the foxtail name. So that's an annual, it's gonna be dying out real soon when the weather gets cold. Hopefully can prevent it next year with the pre-emergent. Now this yard's got basically borderline world record amount of crabgrass because, well, let me show you some more foxtail because there's a bunch of, you see all these seed heads here. It's just, it's just foxtail, you know, all over. So there's a bunch of that. Lots of crabgrass right here. This is the crabgrass seed head crabgrass another annual gonna be dying as soon as it gets cold when i cut it it probably won't put a seed head back up because of the cooler weather but put out a pre-emergent next january or february shouldn't have the crabgrass next year so just getting rid of the crabgrass and the foxtail is going to make a huge difference in this lawn but that's not the only problem in this lawn you come over here and you'll get a sample of what concerns me a little bit more and you see this weed, which a lot of times people say, oh, you know, what is that? And that, that is Dallas grass. Often people tell me I've got a crabgrass problem. I go out there and it's Dallas grass. The Dallas grass is a perennial. It's not going to be prevented with a pre-emergent. So what, and this yard has just got tons and tons and tons of Dallas grass. You can see the seed head here, of the Dallas grass. A lot of times it'll have three. Let's see. Here you go. There's a good example. 
you can see that. So a lot of Dallas grass here. Way too much to come in here and just spot treat a little bit. So, you know, what I'm actually thinking, because of this yard being Bermuda, because of it being in the shape it's in, because of it being a large yard, and you go broke uh, paying for some of the expensive products, multiple treatments on this. What I'm probably gonna do is around December, when the Bermuda is dormant, or at least mostly dormant, I'm gonna probably come in here with a glyphosate application and blanket the whole yard. Now, now you think, why well, aren't you gonna kill your whole yard? Well, the idea is once the Bermuda has gone dormant, but some of the douse grass still has some green in it, you can spray the, the glyphosate or Roundup and you'll be able to kill a lot of the douse grass without actually harming the Bermuda. Maybe, you know, if there's still some green left in the Bermuda, you might damage it. Sometimes you hear people and they say it, it caused their Bermuda to be slower to green up the following spring. Well, listen, this yard needs a lot of help, you know, so if I'm two weeks late greening up next spring, that's not a problem. I need to try to get rid of this Dallas grass this winter, or at least a lot of it, where it's not such a monster to deal with next year. So that's probably gonna be the first step. I'm not even gonna worry about a fall pre-emergent, which would be something I could be doing right now to prevent some cool season weeds. I mean, those are, yeah, those exist, those are a problem, but like, you know, when you're eating an elephant, you gotta take one bite at a time. So I'm not worried about that. Some more creeping, Charlie. So anyway, I'm hoping that the, the glyphosate application will get rid of a lot of it. And then even if I ding up the Bermuda some, when I start fertilizing next spring and summer, I mean, I think it's gonna more than fill in and I would expect it to make a huge difference. Let me show you one more grassy weed we're dealing with in this yard. Well, actually two, since I just seen this one. See, this is the, the easy to identify stalk of bahia grass. This yard's got a lot of bahia grass. I can use metsulfuron next year at a quarter ounce per acre to really do a number on the bahia. And then the last one I want to show you that I saw a good bit in my lawn say my lawn, I hadn't actually moved in yet, but I guess I do own it now, is, is this one. And this is carpet grass. A lot of times it looks kind of like centipede, but you can see the seed head. It's got the Y with the one other little kicker off the seed head. But, you know, I can, carpet grass, I, you can use uh, Celsius as a good product for that. Here's one more thing I want to show you on the lawn. I got a couple of, got something here I'm a little bit excited about. I don't know if you can even see that, but this is a, a gigantic, crepe myrtle that I'm assuming has probably been there for 50 years. I mean, the house is 50 something years old, so I bet these were planted a long time ago. But I've actually got two of them. So hopefully we can get the forestry mulch out here, get this thing cleared off. Oh, there's more than two. There's one right here. And there's another one over here. And there might be at least four. Yeah, I see four really big crepe myrtle so hopefully those are something i can salvage and then you walk back here we've got a little a little i guess you call it a creek it ain't, it's not much of a creek but you know there is a there is water not not exactly bass fishing material but it's something okay got a big project on my hands looking forward to keeping you guys up to date hopefully you'll follow along with me you can do so by subscribing if you're going to be at the GIE next week, come by and see me. I'll be at the Spiker booth giving away a push spreader. Also, also going to be at the Jobber booth talking about how to start a weed control and fertilization business. Would love to meet many of you. Also got the 2018 Lawn Care Life Conference coming up November 15th and 16th. Go to LawnCareLife.com. Got a lot of speakers, a lot of prizes. Bringing in uh, Brian Fullerton, Brian's Lawn Maintenance, Brian Shane from Top Notch Lawn Care. Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut, is going to be here. So you can come hang out with us, win some really great prizes. Got some great sponsors, uh, 10 or 12 speakers. So a really top-notch event that we're putting together. I didn't mean top-notch like top-notch 
Well, I don't care from Brian Shane. That's a whole different top notch. Looking forward to hearing from you guys in the comments. What do you think about this yard? Do you have any landscaping tips? Any tips for me on the treatment? And like I said, I'm gonna be in a lot of things going into this yard from landscaping to purchasing the mower to ripping out bushes to mulching down trees and to killing all these weeds. So I wanna keep you up to date along the way. We'll probably just create a separate playlist for these videos so that people can join in from the beginning and watch them all along. Thanks for watching. Hope to talk to you guys soon. See you later.